Hi, my name is Kyle Tyson. I am the owner of Tyson's Taekwondo. In our last video, we talked about training your mind for positivity. And today, I wanted to dive a little deeper into that with you. Disclaimer. I am not a certified counselor or psychologist. If you are struggling in your personal life, I suggest you seek out a mental health expert. I am simply passing this information on due to my experiences in the personal training and martial arts fields. Today, we're going to be talking about five more things that you can do to train your mind for positivity. These five things are quit complaining, forgive your past, make sacrifices, learn to say no, and respect people. The first step to training your mind for positivity is to quit complaining. I know this is easier said than done, but it is so important. When we complain, we are focusing on the negative. We are dwelling on the things that are wrong in our lives, and this can really drag us down. Think about it. When you are constantly complaining, you are constantly putting yourself in a negative headspace. You are constantly reminding yourself of all the things that are wrong in your life. This can make it very difficult to see the good and it can make it very difficult to be positive. So how do we quit complaining? The first step is to become aware of how often you do it. Start paying attention to your thoughts and your words. How often are you, are you complaining? Once you become aware of how often you complain, you can start to catch yourself. When you find yourself complaining, stop and ask yourself, is there anything I can do to change the situation? If there is, then take action. If there isn't, then let it go. There is no point in dwelling on something that you can't control. Another way to quit complaining is to focus on the positive. When you find yourself thinking negative thoughts, try to counter them with positive ones. For example, if you are stuck in traffic and you find yourself getting angry, try thinking about something good that happened that day. Or try thinking about something that you are grateful for. It might take some time and effort, but if you are committed to quitting complaining, you will be able to do it. And when you do, you will be amazed at how much more positive your life becomes. The second step to training your mind for positivity is to forgive your past. This includes forgiving yourself and forgiving others. Holding on to anger and resentment will only hurt you in the long run. It will keep you stuck in the past and prevent you from moving forward. When we forgive, we are not saying that what happened was okay. We are simply saying that we are no longer going to let it control us. We are choosing to let go of the anger and resentment so that we can move on with our lives. Forgiving yourself can be even harder than forgiving others. We are often our own worst critics and we can be very hard on ourselves when we make mistakes. But it is important to remember that everyone makes mistakes. We're all human and we're all learning as we go. If you are holding on to guilt or shame from your past, it is time to let it go. You deserve to be happy and you deserve to move on. Forgiving yourself is the first step. Forgiving your past is not always easy, but it is always worth it. When you forgive, you are freeing yourself from the past. You are allowing yourself to move on and create a better future for yourself. Chapter three, make sacrifices. The third step to training your mind for positivity is to make sacrifices. This may seem counterintuitive, but hear me out. When we make sacrifices, we are showing ourselves that we are committed to our goals. We are willing to give up something that we want in the short term for something that we want even more in the long term. This can be a difficult thing to do, but it is so important when we make sacrifices, we are showing ourselves that we are disciplined 
and that we are willing to work hard for what we want. This can give us a sense of accomplishment and pride, and it can help us to stay motivated. Making sacrifices can also help us to appreciate the things that we have. When we're constantly chasing after the next big thing, it can be easy to take the things that we have for granted, but when we make sacrifices, we are reminded of how much we value the things that we are working towards. So, what kind of sacrifices can you make? It could be something as simple as giving up your morning coffee in order to save money for a down payment on a house. Or it could be something more challenging, like giving up your weekends to work on a side hustle. Whatever it is, make sure that it is something that is important to you and make sure that you are willing to commit to it. Making sacrifices is not always easy, but it is always worth it. Chapter four, learn to say no. The fourth step to training your mind for positivity is to learn to say no. This can be a difficult one for a lot of people, but it is so important. When we say yes to everything, we are spreading ourselves too thin. We are not giving ourselves the time and energy that we need to focus on the things that are important to us. This can lead to stress, burnout, and resentment. It can also prevent us from achieving our goals. When we say yes to everything, we are essentially saying yes to being average. We are saying that we are okay with being average and that we are not willing to go after what we really want. So how do we learn to say no? The first step is to identify your priorities. What is important to you? What do you want to achieve in your life? Once you know what your priorities are, you can start saying no to the things that are not in line with them. This can be difficult at first, but it gets easier with practice. And it is, it is so worth it. When you learn to say no, you are taking control of your life. You are deciding how you want to spend your time and energy. And you are making sure that you are focusing on the things that are important to you. So start saying no today. You will be amazed at how much more positive and productive your life becomes. Chapter five, respect people. The fifth and final step to training your mind for positivity is to respect people. This includes respecting yourself and respecting others. When we respect ourselves, we are more likely to take care of ourselves, both physically and mentally. We are also more likely to set boundaries and to stand up for ourselves when necessary. When we respect others, we are more likely to treat them with kindness and compassion. We are also more likely to listen to them and to try to see things from their perspective. Respecting others is essential for building strong relationships, both personal and professional. Respect is not something that is given. It is something that is earned. We earn respect by being respectful ourselves. We earn respect by being honest, trustworthy, and fair. We earn respect by treating others the way that we want to be treated. Respect is a two-way street. If you want to be respected, you need to be respectful. It is, it is as simple as that. So make a commitment to respect yourself and to respect others. It will make a world of difference in your life. Train your mind for positivity, part two. So there you have it. Five more things that you can do to train your mind for positivity. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and family. We encourage you to comment, like, follow, and share this video with your friends and family. Your support helps us to reach more people and to spread our message of positivity. I sincerely appreciate your support. Until next time, stay positive and keep training.